The Ice Hogs finally won a game. Two games. Welcome to From Center Ice, the podcast. This is Courtney. I'm Jacqueline. And, uh, yeah, before we talk about the Ice Hogs actually winning for once. For once. We have some housekeeping and some Twitter takes. Just a couple. Yes, structure. Structure. We have an email address at, not at. Not at. <laughs> VFCenterIce at, at. <laughs> gmail.com. You can follow us on Twitter at VF Center Ice Pod or Instagram at From Center Ice Pod. And if you could, subscribe and rate us on iTunes. Even if you don't listen on there, it helps us grow. And tell all your friends to listen to us because hockey's fun sometimes. It's fun and it's back and we're going to talk about it. But Blackhawks hockey isn't fun, but Ice Hogs hockey is fun. Right! Yeah. You got this? Yeah. Um, Yes. From Center Ice is a Rockford Buzz production. Rockford Buzz does the work so you don't have to. It's your one-stop shop where you can find things to do, places to visit, and positive stories about this awesome town. Just search Rockford Buzz in your Google Play Store or Apple App Store and follow along on Instagram and on Facebook. I should rewrite that. It's been a few few yeah. weeks. We'll a month or two. Yeah. I will. Do a little shuffle. Do a little shuffle shuffle. Do a little shuffle shuffle. <laughs> All right. To the Twitter. To the Twitter. To the Twitter. <laughs> All right. The first one, we fly down to Arizona to take a visit to the Coyotes. Meow. Yes. And Craig Morgan, at Craig's Morgan on Twitter, tweeted, Nick Schmaltz has seven points, three goals, and four assists. In his past four games, I believe they've played since then. This was on October 18th. Mm-hmm. This isn't the guy we saw who had 14 points in 17 games last season. This is a much better version. Rick Tockett noted how well he and Christian Dvorak are playing at both ends. Schmaltz has been electric, and I would just like to warn Coyotes fans that Nick Schmaltz is a very good hockey player, but he is incredibly hot and cold and he looks great for a few games and then you're like where did he go bingo and he won't shoot the puck or anything <laughs> but maybe this is the year he becomes consistent hey good for him do it maybe sure it's possible mhm all right then we fly back up to chicago Meow. and we have a quote from our glorious goaltender Corey crawford Uh, about players blocking shots and Ben Pope tweeted this said they're crazier than we are people think we're crazy but we've got all the gear especially demon they're down with half the gear and nothing in front of their face and we're nuts (laughs) I I mean it's a good point it is but I love goalies (laughs) they always have something interesting to say they sure do all right out to the East Coast we go to New Jersey and the New Jersey Devils sign Nico he sure to a seven-year extension worth $7.25 million per season. So there is another pending restricted free agent for next summer off the board. Thank the Lord. I am loving this trend of teams signing their kids early. Hell yeah. This Let's is so not much better. Let's deal with this in right. the off-season. Let's just get it done. I mean, I don't know what we're going to talk about next summer when we don't have... <laughs> RFA signings to scream about. But we'll I'm, find something. I'm sure there'll be some, and there'll be some more stupid lists to read. Yeah. But until then, we'll, we have we'll actual... worry about hockey. that when we get to yeah, it. Yeah, I don't even want to think about it. Not at all. Let's get through the season. <laughs> yes. Back to Chicago. Yeah. After the game on Saturday, I believe, yes, when the Blackhawks went to overtime mm-hmm. with Columbus, right? Yes. No? Maybe so. (laughs) Let's confirm. Yeah, Columbus. Oh, it was Friday, not Saturday. Friday night against Columbus, they won in overtime Mm -hmm. off of Taves' shin pads. Yep. So we got this tweet. The most overtime goals in Blackhawks history, Taves with 13. Yep. Hosa with 8, Sharp with 8, Kane with 8, and Seabrook with 7. Blackhawks history, huh? It's crazy they're all from this era. Right? And huh. Taves is, like, way above everybody else. Somehow. I don't understand. <laughs> I would expect it, like, Kane to be the highest. Uh-huh. But no. Nah. 
That's pretty crazy, though. 13. Right. It was Kane's original shot for the overtime winner, right? This is true. Yeah. Okay. So and then it, Taves kind of jacked it from him. He but did, but it wouldn't fine. have gone it, exactly. in if it wasn't for his exactly. body. Exactly. Yeah. And then we fly out to, well, it was in Chicago, but a Columbus player. We have goalie Elvis again, back at it. Yes. Who the Hawks beat in overtime. He's not really doing great, is he? Well, his quote from this game was, it wasn't seven goals, it was just three now. Oh. <laughs> Poor man! Poor goalie Elvis. Oh. <laughs> He'll get better. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I'm rooting for goalie Elvis. Absolutely. He's still a kid. Aww. He'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta look at the silver lining here, guys. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Jack Hughes got his first goal this weekend against Vancouver. It was against his brother's team. I was trying, I accidentally deleted, and I can't get it back. What'd you do? I was in my note. I was going to take notes for the things that we talked about so I could have the description. Oh. And I accidentally deleted too much, and doing the shaky thing didn't help this time. So, <laughs> <laughs> so it's just gone. <laughs> okay. Anyway, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was trying to be prepared. All right. Well, so Jack Hughes got his first goal, huh? <laughs> he did, finally, against his brother Quinn's team. Yeah, Vancouver. So the whole family was in the yeah. house. And they won one to nothing. So it was, Damn, it was just his goal? It was just his goal. Nice. Like, how bad does that have to sting for his brother? <laughs> Quite. Yeah. And that's it for the Twitter takes. Okay. Now we have hockey. hockey. Like that. Yes, our hockey. Our team's hockey. My favorite. Sometimes. So, yeah. <laughs> we'll start with the Ice Hogs because that's the good news. Uh huh. <laughs> so, Friday night, they were back home at the BMO Harris Bank Center mm. to kick off their 12 game season series against the Chicago Wolves. Good lord. There's so many times to play one team. Way too many times. So many. But they got two of them out of the way this weekend. Hell yeah. And they were coming into the weekend 0-3 on the season. Yeah, they were. Hadn't won a game. <laughs> totally defeated. Up against their bitter rivals. Mm-hmm. And a team that is good. They're not doing so well so far this season, but right. you can never count the Wolves out no. because inevitably they always come back and make us angry and make <laughs> the playoffs. <laughs> and last year they went to the final. But they lost. But they lost. Ha ha. So that's all that matters. So yeah. Friday night, back in Rockford, Chicago Wolves. We hadn't won a game. They had won one game. <laughs> Neither of us were thriving. Yes. I wasn't feeling very great heading into the game, but you asked me if they were going to win, and I said they were going to. And God damn it, you were right! They won! They won. They won. Because of their first period. <laughs> yeah, just their first period. They came out looking so good. That was the best period of Ice Hogs hockey I've seen in... Maybe forever. <laughs> I don't know about forever, but definitely the past couple of seasons. They had 17 shots. 17 shots And held in the, the Wolves to four period. shots. Oh my god, it was amazing. Okay, during the first couple of games, or not games, the first couple of minutes, yes. I was worried. Because okay. they kept ringing it behind the net, they behind did. the net, back and forth, back and forth. It was not coming in front of the net at all. No, they it were looking just... like their typical old selves. Yes, but then they got it in front of the net. I don't know what happened. And it's like a switch flipped. Yeah. And they all went like psycho mode and started just shooting, shooting, shooting. Yeah. It was beautiful. It was like once Dylan got the first goal, mm -hmm. Dylan Secura got the first goal of the game. It's like that just opened the floodgates. It I think, was glorious. I think they were at six shots at that point yeah. when he scored. And then they ended up with 11 more on the period. Just Meanwhile, in the first period. they killed... Like, six consecutive minutes of penalties. Yeah, because of high sticks. There was a high stick, yeah, from Carlson. and that then was four minutes. Yep. He was coming out of the box and still had one foot in the penalty box and touched the puck, which Counts is, as interference. I don't know how it's interference, <laughs> but it counts as an interference so penalty. back he went. We had no idea what happened. We were sitting there, we were like, wait, why are there another two minutes up on the board? <laughs> he hadn't even come out of the box yet. <laughs> Which he hadn't completely, just almost. <laughs> that was the problem. Yes. 
so back to the penalty kill. And I think they gave up like one or two shots during that whole six minutes. Yeah, it was like, amazing. What? They looked so dominant. It was great. I don't understand. And then during that final penalty kill, the interference call, uh, John Quenville got a shorthanded goal. He sure did. So, and before the game, I was talking smack. I was like, he needs to be scratched because he hasn't done anything. And, and then of course, comes. of course, the first two goals, Dusicky and Q, the guys that I talked smack about. <laughs> Absolutely, they you need to in. talk more shit. Apparently, I need to let you talk shit. You do. I'm telling you, <laughs> you need to not get mad at me when I'm talking shit because it ends up working. I just love our babies, okay? Yeah, but they need to do better. They do. Exactly. Absolutely. And so I say that, and then they end up doing better. Okay, get them then. Yeah. Like, what was it? The home opener when Dylan <laughs> scored, and I was literally were... saying again, that is literally Dylan the is never going to score. That is literally the second time that's happened, as it's coming out of my mouth. As it's coming out of my mouth. It's... I was like, surely this isn't going to work again. But, oh, but it, it did. did. It did. They lost you that game. You get as far as, like, Dylan's never going to, and then he's like, then, fuck boom. you, boom. Yeah. <laughs> He's got, like, a spidey sense for it. He does. And it's not like I can try it every game, because the magic will wear off. Oh, absolutely. you got to save that for some yeah. some real bad times. I'm two for two on it so far. <laughs> or he's two for two on it. Something. Both of you. We're You're two working for two. together. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. It's funny. Too bad they lost the home opener, but... Yeah, well. You know. You know. It's fine. But he scored Friday, and then Quinville scored, and then Anton Vadine. Scored yeah. the third goal of the period. He did. Coming right down the slot and shoop, snipe over Garrett Sparks. Garrett Sparks! Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! I was <laughs> so worried about Garrett Sparks. You were. You were having a crisis. Yeah, I was him. having a mental breakdown. And then we score three on him in the first period. Oh, it was glorious. It Just was. Just beautiful. It Just was. Just beautiful. Yes. But then we go to the first intermission. We did do that. And then... And then... They never came back from the first <laughs> intermission, or so it seemed. Yeah, they came back looking like their old selves. They did. They got 16 shots the rest of the way through the game, yep. so the second and third period. Mm -hmm. They had 17 shots in the first, 16 <laughs> for the rest of the game. Yeah. Meanwhile, they let Chicago catch up and get 27 shots for the rest of the game. Yeah. Oh, that quick math. Look at you. <laughs> I'm like, where did I write that? You didn't. I was trying to add it up real quick as I was speaking. You got it. <laughs> I did. So, yeah, it did not work out very well. Thankfully, they had that first period. Mm -hmm. If they didn't, this would have been a terrible game of hockey. It would have. For us. Either we would have lost. Technically, by the score sheet, we would have lost. Mm -hmm. But if you have no goals, you never really know how it's going to pan out. Right. Or it would have been or felt a lot closer than it did mm -hmm. and that's just not good for our health no not at all no <laughs> but colin stood tall only gave up two yeah the first one was a very weird play with was that the one where he went all the way to the side it was so nicholas Bowden was behind the net uh more so in the corner but you know whatever and he turns over the puck into the middle of the slot Colin gets ready to make the save, but then the <laughs> Chicago Wolves player tries to get him out of his net, so he goes, like, towards the faceoff dot, and it works because Colin just, just, just like, follows drifted, him. Just, like, way Completely loses his, his net. net. The Wolves player passes it to his teammate in the slot, and boom, right in the net. It was so easy for them. We were like, oh, no. We were like, Colin, <laughs> Colin, what are he you doing? He had looked so good up until that point. Uh-huh. And it was in my notes to be like, wow, this is a bounce back game for Colin. He's not overplaying pucks. Right, he looks great. He's just square to the shooter in the net. He's I mean, not losing his net. Not that he was seeing many shots up to that point. Right. He, got, he saw four. It was in the second period, though, so there were a few more shots a on few. him. A few. But he wasn't overplaying the puck. That's Until all then. that mattered. And then he was basically... In China. Like, he, he was <laughs> like, nowhere Colin, to be where found. where are you going? Like, nowhere to be found. Why? And, I mean, to give him some sort of credit, I guess, if that guy would have shot it, he would have stopped it. Yes. But. But that's not the way professional hockey typically works. No. 
because the Wolves are also, unfortunately, a good hockey team, and they can pass to their players. And <laughs> wow, what a concept. We don't have the defense to cover all of those players, and so into the back of the net it went. Fine, whatever. I don't even remember the second goal, Mm-mm. to be honest. <laughs> it must not have been anything terrible then. It must not have. I can check my notes. You do have those. Because guess what? She writes an article after every game now, right? Uh-huh, I do. Just, is it just like every weekend? Or? No. no, Every, every game? Weekend. Nice, nice, yeah. nice. Except when there's a couple in a row, I batch it together. That's so fine. I'm not putting out like article three in article. three days. Yeah. No. no uh, it was a backdoor shot with 7.52 to go in the third period. It was yeah. a power play goal. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. And we continue to not be great on the penalty kill. No. Whatever. But they held on to win, 3-2, to two, won it in overtime, or not, not overtime. overtime. That was Saturday. Yes. <laughs> won it in regulation is what I meant to say. And they got their first one of the season. Oh, it was so great. Against the Wolves. Yes. At home. It couldn't have gone any better, honestly. It was amazing. I mean. The only thing better would have been a Colin shutout, but. He deserved that. He did. Except. Except that Except one. Except that one goal. So maybe he didn't deserve it. He, he deserved did up to that. Point. He deserved a three to one game. So they won their first game, and then they had to travel to Rosemont the all next night. All the way. <laughs> all the way the down I ninety to Rosemont. <laughs> <laughs> and they had to try to take those good feelings into a back to back game, and try to beat the Wolves again, who had sparks in net again. Again. But we switched up our goalies. Instead of Colin playing, we had Matt Tompkins in net. And we did find out that Kevin is injured, right? Yes, he has an upper body injury. Okay. I was afraid he was just getting shafted because he wasn't backing up, he wasn't playing. Right, he wasn't getting dressed at all. Yeah, it was kind of worrisome, but he has an upper body injury. Which is somewhat reassuring. Somewhat. I mean, you don't want him to be injured, but at least he's not being sat just to be sat. Yes. I hope he is okay. And I hope he comes back soon. Yes. Exactly. But for the time being, we got Tommy. We have Tommy in it, and I was concerned because his first go around, which was two years ago now, because his last start in the AHL was February of 2018. Really? Yeah. He's been in India ever since. Okay. But it paid off because he looked very good Saturday night in good, Rosemont. Good, good, good. Yes. We ended up winning 3-2 to two in overtime mm-hmm. on a Tyler Secure goal. His second of the game. His second of the game. He also scored the first one, which was a really weird shot. So he shot it from the left face-off dot. It hit Garrett Sparks' pads, popped out, hit a defender, and went in the net. <laughs> Yeah, I watched yeah. the highlights. I didn't get to watch the actual game, but I watched the highlights yeah. later. It was a rather strange goal, but sometimes <laughs> you have to be lucky. Yeah, but man, it's rubber out there. It'll bounce. Yeah. <laughs> so we got we got the lead, and then Chicago tied it up, and then Philip Holm restored the lead, and then Chicago <laughs> tied it up. And that was it until overtime, and with 11 seconds left on the clock, oh, beautiful. Sakura scored. On a breakaway. Love it. And it was amazing. And I didn't know he still had a shot like that left. That was beautiful. Because we haven't seen it in a while. I feel like we didn't see it at all last year. Uh Uh-uh. He was very off last year, and he was injured. Right. What what was wrong with him? I don't remember what the injury was. I just remember he was injured, and then he came back, and we were like, wow, he's not Not the same. Not the same, yeah. But no, that that overtime goal was beautiful. It was. He had the wheels to break break away. away. He got the shot over Sparks' glove. Oh, oh, so wonderful to see. It was. <laughs> I love seeing Garrett Sparks get scored on. <laughs> Me too. And even better that he's in the net for the Wolves mm. being scored on. Mm. It's so beautiful. Yeah. And that game we got shots too. It was 39-33. And I saw a tweet today. They are undefeated so far this season when they have more shots. Whoa. What a concept, man. Shoot the goddamn Weird. puck. Weird. Shoot the puck? You mean when they don't shoot the puck, they don't score goals? Correct. That's so wild. What? Yeah. And there's only two teams in the American League right now who have scored first in every game, and it's us and the Marlies. Beautiful. Isn't that weird? <laughs> and yet we've only won two games. I'm not sure what the Marlies record is, but we're two and three. Yeah. Which is a lot better than coming off of the weekend 0 and 5. Oh, that would have hurt real bad. I might have lost my mind. I would have been real sad. Yes. <laughs> very, very sad. 
But the game on Saturday looked a lot more even matched. There wasn't a period where one team looked a lot better than the other. Mm -hmm. It was more so just a back and forth game, which fine. It was the second in two nights. Right. You kind of expect it, but at least they didn't come out slow and flat. But neither did the Wolves. But they kept up with the Wolves, so it was fine. <laughs> wow, they get, like, all week off. They don't play again until Friday. Yeah. The schedule has been so weird so far. And it usually is in the AHL. Yeah. They get long breaks, but it's been weird like, for both six the days? Hogs and the Blackhawks. Yeah. Huh. They play Cleveland on Friday. Yes, and they're in Cleveland. Yeah. They're not back here till the thirtieth. Thirtieth, yeah. That's wild. It's I another. Don't know. It's another two and two. They play in Cleveland two nights in a row. Okay. Well, hopefully they take the luck from this two and two. That would be great. Over to Cleveland. Yeah, keep that up. Yes, that would be amazing. So good. I don't know Cleveland's record right now, but you know the Mansters. The Mansters. The Cleveland Mansters. Unfortunately, Chicago won on Sunday. Ah. In a shootout against Milwaukee. Ah. I know, it's like two teams that I wish could lose had to play each other, <laughs> and they both ended up with a point. Damn it. <sighs> and then Chicago took the extra one in the shootout. I wonder if they played Sparks three nights in a row if they finally gave it to their rookie. <laughs> <laughs> they, they should probably let him get they it. They probably should. <sighs> Vegas kind of screwed him over when they called Oscar Dansk up. But that's fine. I'm fine with that. Cleveland looks pretty even. Even? Loss, loss, win, loss, loss, win, win. That's their record backwards. Sure. <laughs> win, win, loss, loss, win, loss, loss is their record up till so now. So they have more losses than wins. They do. By one. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Us too. <laughs> Great. Great. <laughs> Something's got to give here. Yeah. Hopefully, somebody will win. Hopefully we come away from the weekend with two more wins. Oh, that would be so beautiful. It would. Starting 0-3 and, and then going 4-3. Four four three. Three. Yeah, yeah, let's make this a positive record. I would take that 100%. Let's do it. Yes. Yeah, but Tompkins looked very good. Good. He looked large in net, and he is a big boy, but... He played big as well, and he was moving around rather well and looking through traffic and making saves when he needed to. I hope he gets a home game soon. Me too, but I also want Kevin back. I know. But, like, <laughs> with him being injured, I, I do know, want but to I, see Tommy I, in that. Yeah, but I want Kevin back. I understand, and I do as well. Yeah, but we're, I want... Courtney, we're on the same team here. <laughs> <laughs> you always want to argue. <laughs> I just want Kevin back. I don't know what you want from me. I just I want also Kevin. want Kevin back. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, they're finally shooting the puck. They are finally winning. You think they listened to our podcast? Obviously. They just had that playing in the locker room, didn't they? I think that's a great pep talk that's for them. That's how they... <laughs> Shoot the fucking Shoot puck! Shoot the fucking puck! <laughs> <laughs> You're like, oh, maybe we should shoot the puck. Wow, what an idea. I didn't Let's even think it. about that. <laughs> Uh, oh. Imagine. Yeah. <laughs> so we are rather happy. But I watched like all the post game interviews and everything. Mm -hmm. They didn't really say what they did different. They didn't really talk about I know how they pulled it together. Tyler was talking about how they they're learning to play more as a team and they have to be aggressive, aggressive on the puck. Aggressive and physical. Yeah. Like, whoa, you have like, to win battles? <laughs> that's kind Imagine of... Imagine that! Uh, that shouldn't be, like, news-breaking. No, like... it shouldn't. <laughs> but it should be common sense in hockey. In hockey, yes, that's how yeah. you play the game. But sure, if you're just not figuring it out, fine, keep it Whatever, up. just, just keep do doing it. it. Do it. They didn't, though. They stopped after the first period. <laughs> they did. But Saturday was better. Okay, well, yeah. they won. That's they all did. that matters. But Friday night was the last we got to see of Curbs in Rockford. Yeah, he had to go back. Because the Blackhawks called him back up. And I don't know okay. why he wasn't down here for his full 14 days, which was annoying. At least let him play against Chicago. But I guess they wanted him to make his debut yesterday, and that would have been 3-3 three and three for him. Yeah. So. It's so frustrating. He still didn't put up any points on Friday, but he looked a lot better. He yeah. improved like every single game he was down here, I thought. I agree. Yeah. I agree. 
he wasn't really like he didn't stand out the first game that he played except for the fact that yo number 77 that's our prospect yes that's that guy <laughs> we know he's here yes um but he got he became more prominent every game like yeah. you said he stood out more he was doing more he was actually using his body he yeah was... and then he had a breakaway chance on friday's oh, game i wanted that so Me too. bad it would have been so pretty but he got tripped up on the play yeah the goalie tripped him yeah and it wasn't called womp womp oh, womp. oh yeah. well oh well but he's he... good to have him while we did it was it was a lot of fun and he has a good stick mm-hmm. which was surprising he was breaking up a lot of passes and a lot of shot attempts yeah he's a very uh um what's the word i'm looking for I had it a uh, very all around uh, dynamic, dynamic player. He's a dynamic <laughs> player. That's there you go. The one. Words. Words. I got him. Dynamic. He yes. is. He does a lot out there. He does. I feel like he's good at everything, but not great at any one thing. Correct, but he's 18 years old. Exactly. <laughs> These are his first you pro can't, games. You can't expect him to be great at any one thing. Right. But he's good or decent at everything it yeah, seems definitely yeah and he will expand on those and he will like, grow his powers yes and he i have high hopes for him me for too. sure me too and he made his nhl debut yesterday mm-hmm. when the blackhawks took on the capitals they did do that i was excited to watch him um the game was not ideal to say the least they lost, what was it, five to three? Did they? I didn't get a chance. You didn't. All right, because you fell asleep. I did do that. <laughs> I was a sleepy girl. Yeah, they lost five to three. One of them was an empty nutter. Um, it was a bad ga- It was a very weird game. So the Hawks had over 40 shots on goal. Wow. So they were shooting the puck. At what? Holtby. Was he good, or were the shots just bad? Holtby was... He had a very good game. Okay. Holtby had a very good game. But the bottom two lines were amazing. The top two lines, <laughs> I wanted to cross-check them all in the face. Uh-oh. Because they looked horrible. Mm. They looked so like bad. typical Hawks bad, or like a different Ju- kind of bad? I don't even know. I don't know if I was just so annoyed with them by that point. So everything they did, I was just like, oh my god! Oh my god, <laughs> oh my god what is wrong with you? <laughs> it's like they breathe. I'm like, god <laughs> damn it, why do you Go have to sit breathe? down! <laughs> Stop breathing on the ice. <laughs> I don't know. And poor Kirby, he was stuck centering a line of Dylan Strom and Patrick Kane. Yes. Theoretically, that should have been good for him. Uh-huh. But no, because those two played like garbage all night. <laughs> And I felt so bad for him. I was like, somebody please rescue Kirby. Because he is the only guy on that line that is defensively responsible. And he's 18 fucking years old. 18. Like, come on. Uh, This poor kid. He almost set Kane up for a good goal in front of the net. But Kane shot it wide. It was on his backhand, so whatever. Yeah. Um, He he looked decent. He kind of looked like his first game in Rockford. So you saw him for a couple shifts, okay. and then other ones, he wasn't doing anything to hurt the game, but he also wasn't looking magical out there. Okay. I mean, that's to be expected. This is a new league. Exactly. <laughs> like it's, it's, his, it's the highest league. It's his first game in the NHL against the Washington Capitals. Yeah, that's a good team. Like yeah. Like, a, a real good team. So. so, Kirby's game, totally fine with. Patrick Kane. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Patty. <laughs> looked brain dead out there. <laughs> And then I talk shit on Twitter, and then he scores the game tying goal. I was like, you've got to be kidding about me. about right. Yeah. He was turning the puck over. He couldn't hold on to it. He, I guess he was getting shots, but none of them looked anywhere near challenging for the goalie. He, he just looked not there. Like, mm. Patrick Kane was not in the building. His body was there. Yeah, but you can but tell. But he was him. not. <laughs> And the top line was even worse. So the top line was Debrinket, Taves, and Shaw, and they could have just been sitting in the press box and it wouldn't have made a difference. They looked awful. Debrinket looked horrible. Taves wasn't doing anything. Shaw kept taking penalties. Shaw was taking penalties. I was like, what is going on right now? The top two lines looked like garbage. I felt so bad for Kirby in his NHL debut because he was stuck playing with them. 
I wish they would have just put him on the fourth line to play with Kajula and Nylander. I feel like he probably would have gotten a point or two. Hmm. Yeah. He won his first face-off, though. He did. He won his first face-off How nice is in that? the NHL against Nicholas Backstrom. I was so happy for Beautiful. him. Beautiful. Yeah. But the game, it was something else to watch. Like, you, you never expect the Hawks to win every game. But you at least... I, I don't even know, because they got over 40 shots on net, so they weren't bad, but they looked bad. I yeah. don't know how else to really describe it. But that third line of Saad, Camp, and Kubalik is dynamite. Who would have thought? Right? <laughs> Going into this season, if you had to say that the, <laughs> there's one line you want on the ice for the Blackhawks at all times, three. <laughs> that would not have been my guess. Not at all. But it is. They were amazing. They got either one or two goals. I know Kubalik got one goal for sure. And then Kajula got a goal from Nylander. Oh, yeah. And then Kane got the other one. Okay. When he was put with Nylander, mm-hmm. like, don't put him on the top two lines. Put him on the fourth line. Fine. Whatever. All right. So, yeah. Alex Nylander had a very good game, which I was happy about because I'm still pissed about that I trade. I was going to say, you're happy about it? Yeah. I thought... Because we have him, so okay. you can't reverse the trade at this point. So no. I want him to be a good player because well, I don't want to be mad about this You never know trade. with you because sometimes you like to hold on to your saltiness and you root for certain people to fail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we just had this talk about Robin Lehner. <laughs> I was getting there. <laughs> but I want Nylander to be good because he's still a young kid, and if he can hit his full potential that he had when he was drafted, okay. we're golden. All right. Because he has all the skill in the world, he just needs to put it together. But having him playing on the fourth line with, let's see, he was with Carpenter and Kajula yesterday. Mm-hmm. And they were just doing their job of playing hockey, which is wow. what you want from your team. Is you just sure do. <laughs> each line has their job. Just do it. Mm-hmm. The top two quit yesterday. <laughs> nope, we're not coming into work. The bottom two lines, amazing. And just saw, that line of Saad, Camp, Kubalik was, like, uh, all three of them when they were on the ice were just around the net. I was like, whoa! Wow. I know, it's That's, it's groundbreaking, it really. It is, it is. Who would have thought that if you're surrounding the net, f- battling for the puck, and getting shots that you'll get goals? I think they cracked the code. It was crazy. I will give Saad that $6 million if he keeps playing like this, because (laughs) he looked amazing yesterday. And I don't know if it's being on the third line against lesser competition, Mm. but I wasn't paying attention to who they were even on the ice against, so maybe they got out there against the top line every once in a while. I don't know. That line, amazing. I wanted them out there at all times. And then came the end of the game when our net was empty, We needed a goal, and I wanted to fire Jeremy Colladin. Oh, no. What happened? I wanted him gone. I I think I was asleep by this point. I was a thousand percent done with him, and I wanted him to leave the bench, and I never wanted to see his face again. What did he do? So, we needed a goal. Mm -hmm. The top two lines, all game, garbage. The players on the ice, Kane, Strom, Taves, Shaw, I'm pretty sure Gus, and Keith. Oh, dear. No sod. No Kubalik, no Nylander, no Kajula, none of the guys who were making He's... any sort of impact during the entire game. He's... We need a goal. Those guys don't see the ice. He's using the old formula. Yes. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> don't Kubalik, do that. Kubalik, pure sniper. That is what this kid does, is he shoots the puck hard and over the goalie. We need that. He didn't see the ice at all when we had the net empty. Uh... I was so... Mad. I wanted Jeremy gone. Jeremy, don't do this. And if he keeps doing that, I want him gone after this season. Wow. Because that is not, there is no excuse for that. I mean... You have a line who is playing amazingly all game, getting chance after chance after chance, getting a goal, Mm -hmm. and you don't put them out there when the net's empty? Yeah. A bunch of guys who will grind for the puck and not let the puck get out of the zone. Like, a couple of times, they got chances at the net because they wouldn't let Washington get out of the zone. They were battling for the puck. Mm -hmm. And then we got our, or Washington got the empty netter 
because we took it down to the boards, lost a board battle, it goes the other way, into the net. Huh. You have to put the guys out there who are playing well, not just the guys who, oh, this is like a video game. Stick your best <laughs> names out there. Obviously, you're going to get a goal. That's not yes. how the NHL works in real life. No. But that's like how he was playing it. And if he keeps doing that, he needs to be gone. And I love Jeremy, but that is not okay. And he kept putting Seabrook out there. Keith and Sieb's were manning the point on the second power play unit. It's just inexcusable. It is not okay. You make some very good points here. I was unaware. Yes. <laughs> because I was asleep. Asleep. <laughs> Uh, usually tossing Kane and Taves out there when you're in need does pan out because they will be asleep the entire game and then be like, oh, we need a goal? Yeah. And then they'll just go do it. But it wasn't working yesterday. Exactly. We even called a timeout while we had the net empty. He could have changed the lines up because it obviously wasn't working. Should have. Didn't. Hmm. I think he might have sat one guy to put Saad out there, but not the rest of Saad's line. Right. Just Saad. You've got to use what's working. You have to use what's working, and he didn't. Dabrinkit was turning the puck over all night. Oh, no. Cat, what you doing? I don't know. And he wasn't even the worst one on his line. Ooh. Taves and Shaw were even worse. Big yikes. And they were all out there with the nut empty, and then we got scored on. That's rough. I'm not saying we would have tied it up if you put the third line out there, but right. we had a lot better chance of yeah, doing it than the what they were doing. Would have been... Hmm. Well, when do they play next? Tomorrow, right? Tomorrow against Vegas. Of course it's Vegas. <laughs> against Vegas. And I'm assuming we see Robin Lehner in net, mm -hmm. which I'm fine with. It wasn't Corey's fault at all yesterday. Right. And. When it is, you know I will give him shit for it. Even yes. I will. <laughs> yeah, I, you've booed him before. <laughs> and that's saying something. It is. <laughs> it, it hurts me when you do it. I'm like, wow. <laughs> wow, you really feel this way, huh? It hurts me too, but <laughs> oh, I want I my team to win. <laughs> Absolutely. So I do want to... Robin should have played yesterday. There's also no excuse for Corey being in that yesterday. He had a great game against Edmonton when we were there, no doubt. Mm -hmm. But Robin played Saturday, or Friday night against Columbus, got the win in overtime. There is no reason he shouldn't have been given the net again yeah. yesterday. Right. This huh. guy was a Vesna caliber goalie last year. You, <laughs> you can't just yank him around like this. Right. You Especially if play. you want him to sign another contract at the end of the year, if that's their goal. Mm -hmm. You can't play him like this. No, no. It's not okay. And yeah, I want Coria to stay with the team. I want him to get most of the starts. But the way this season's going so far... Just go with what's working, and that worked on Friday, so keep going with it. You would think. Yeah. It seems simple. It seems that way. Nothing can be simple. And I saw people blaming Corey for the game yesterday, <sighs> of they do. and I wanted to peel my skin off <laughs> because there was not one goal that was his fault. People don't care about that. They don't. And I really just need... During the hockey season, I need to not pay attention to the internet. <laughs> no, don't read the comments. I need to just log off, yeah. delete all of my accounts, <laughs> just sit down here with the microphone and record <laughs> and let you do everything on the internet because I cannot handle the people who talk about hockey they on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's always the ones with the dumbest opinions that are yelling the loudest. That is true and in you, every situation. I know, you just have to keep that in mind. Like, if somebody's really nailing the point home, I they do. probably don't know what they're talking about. I do, but when it comes to my goalie, I know I can't let it go. I know. Anything else, I'm like, wow, that's a really dumb take. <laughs> but when it, <laughs> when it comes to my goalie, I cannot deal with it. I know. I don't know if it's because I've been trying to convince people for ten years yeah, that this it's... guy is a good goaltender, <laughs> or what. But when it comes to my goalie... I feel like if they haven't gotten it at this point, they're probably never gonna agree. It's so frustrating. I don't know how you can disagree. Like, it's straight facts. Every single time we have a capable goaltender playing behind Crawford, it happened with Ray Emery, mm -hmm. R.I.P. Ray, um, mm -hmm. and it ha happened with Scotty. Mm -hmm. Every time we have a goalie who is capable of winning games, who is Corey's goalie partner... Mm -hmm. Everybody on the internet screams for the backup. <laughs> Every 
fucking year. Yeah. I don't understand it. And time after time, he has proved he is the starter for this team. And maybe mm-hmm. he won't be this season. Because mm-hmm. Laner is a very good goalie. Mm-hmm. And Corey's getting older. Yeah. It's what happens in hockey. It's fine. I will get over it. <laughs> It'll take a lot of therapy, but I will get over it. <laughs> But you have to do what's best for the team. Mm-hmm. But blaming the goalie when it's not his fault is nonsensical. Not the way to he go. He is about not it. the only guy on the ice. Absolutely not. One of the goals was scored because Seabrook ran into somebody, fell over, <laughs> and the puck was shot across the crease for a backdoor goal that Corey had no chance on. Oh, like, Seabs. Well, <sighs> Seabrook needs to go. <laughs> Duncan Keith needs to go. Oh, I am sick of. Of this Blackhawks defense, I am so ready to just hand the keys over to the kids. Just call up Boquist, call up Bowden, oh, call sure. up Gilbert, call up everybody. Shoot these guys <laughs> off to the moon so I never have to see them put on a Blackhawks jersey ever again. Because I am so sick of watching everybody on this defense not named Calvin DeHaan. I swear <laughs> to God. <laughs> okay. All right. I see you. All right. I am so sick. And seeing Seabrook and Keith... Manning the point on the second power play unit just makes me want to stick knives through my ear holes. Ouch. Because they turn it over all the time. Yeah. And I can't deal with it. <laughs> and we already know how we feel about Gus. I don't even have to go into how we feel about Gus, who was responsible for one of the goals yesterday. I know, that's very Between obvious for him us. and Patrick Kane teaming up for a shorthanded goal against... I wanted to catapult myself into the sun last night. <laughs> so watching. Glad I took a little nappy nap. <laughs> I would much rather have been sleeping than watching this game where they got over 40 shots on Braden Holtby That's and insane. still managed to look like garbage. That's crazy. How does that work? It doesn't. But Usually, it did. if you have over 40 shots, you look like you played a good game. I mean, typically. No. <laughs> that is not how this game went. <laughs> they looked like garbage. Ugh. It was exhausting. So exhausting that I went to sleep. Exactly. You weren't even watching it and it put you to sleep. <laughs> By the end of it, I just had to like have a meditation moment. I was like, the Ice Hogs beat the Wolves twice this twice, weekend. Twice. Two times. The Ice Hogs twice beat times. the Wolves twice this weekend. And then I was okay. All right. Hey, the Hogs can get you through sometimes. They can't. I swear on everything, I enjoy watching the American League more than the NHL. Oh, for sure. Because... There is For no sure. reason a team like the Hawks with this much talent on their <laughs> roster should be as fucking bad as they are. Not at all. And it's so infuriating <laughs> that they cannot play hockey. <laughs> you are so right. Like, oh. totally, completely correct. So give me my rookies in the American League any day of the week mm-hmm. over watching these guys who make millions of dollars... <laughs> Not being bothered to show up to play a game. Uh, it's It always hurts the most when you know that they're not playing with heart. Yes! That's the frustration. If this team was just bad, mm-hmm. like if it was just full of bad players... Right, that just couldn't do it. Okay, it would be beyond frustrating, but okay. But no! No. No, we these have are world-class. Patrick Kane. <laughs> fucking. And, of course, <laughs> he had to go and score a goal yesterday, but to That's be fair. That's what he does. It was an odd man rush goal. It was a two-on-one, and, of course, Patrick Kane's going to score. It's what he does. On an odd man rush. He, he couldn't looks... score when there were all ten guys in the zone. No. He but... would show up to a game. Yep. Not care through the first two and a half periods. Yep. And, and then, then win the game. Win the game. I was expecting that to happen yesterday. After he tied the game, I was like, great. He's going to get, like, three goals. He's going to get a hat trick because I called him out on Twitter. (laughs) It always happens to me. They just make me look stupid, which I am totally fine with as long as they win the game. I am fine with looking dumb. (laughs) Somebody replied to the tweet I was talking shit about Kane yesterday after he scored, just Uh saying LOL. And I was like, I know. Like, right. You're fully aware. I... I am fine with looking silly if they win. But no, he got that one goal and it looked like garbage again, so I felt validated. <laughs> the game uh, was terrible. I don't have therapy this week. I wish I did. I don't either, by chance. <laughs> oh, hell. Great. It's a good thing you didn't watch that game last night, then. <laughs> We'd be knocking down their doors. 
Yes, it was so infuriating. <laughs> and now tomorrow they play Vegas. Uh, mm. I don't see them winning unless Laner stands on his head. I'm gonna say they're gonna do it. They're gonna do it. They're gonna do it. All right. What day is tomorrow? Tuesday. <laughs> yes. They're gonna do it. <laughs> Does that matter? Sure. Do they win on Tuesdays? Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm going with. That's what we call the winning day. <laughs> <laughs> the Tuesday winners. <laughs> the winning Tuesday Blackhawks. Yep. That's what we call them around here. <laughs> Oh, man. I think that's all I really have to scream about. Yeah. Do you have anything else to scream about today? I don't believe so. Oh, God. That game. <laughs> I'm so glad it's over. I'm and so it's glad been I over. missed it. <laughs> it's been over for almost 24 hours now, and I still can get this worked up about how bad it was. I can put it on the TV. I record all the Hawks games. Uh, Just, like, tie you to a chair and make you watch it like a form of torture. I was going to say, that sounds like torture. It Please don't be. do that to me. It would be an absolute form of torture. I would really appreciate if you didn't do that to me. <laughs> I like to think we're pretty good friends. Yes, I won't. But if I ever need to torture you, I know how to, I will keep that game. Okay. <laughs> In right. case you ever deserve it. Bookmark it. Yeah. <laughs> oh. All right, so... The Hawks are going to win tomorrow. Absolutely. It's Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> yes. The Ice Hawks are going to sweep this next weekend in Cleveland. Absolutely. They're going to come home and lose on the 30th because that's because how it that's, goes. Yeah. And then we'll be 500 on the year. Fine. Is it? Is it fine? No. No. But I can fine. say it is now because I am not at that game on the 30th yet screaming my head off. Nope. We've got a week and a half. <sighs> A week and a half before we get more hogs hockey. I don't like that. Is that is a long time. I don't like these big breaks. Me either. I don't like the big breaks. Cleveland isn't even far. Like, they could have made one of those a home game. They could have, but they didn't. <sighs> Whatever. I mean, we could drive to Cleveland. We could. I don't really Probably want to. Should. <laughs> <laughs> it's the one sea city we haven't been it to is. in Ohio. It is. <laughs> That's that'll have to be our reason to go out there sometimes to see the Ice Hogs game. So I don't know why else we'd go out there. I mean, what they do have do you... the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, right? Which would be kind of cool to go to, I guess. They've got the Browns. I don't want to see the <laughs> Cleveland Browns, <laughs> but they got them. They do. They also have the Monsters. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Eh. We'll get to Cleveland at some point. At some for point. For one reason or another. <laughs> we'll figure out I remember driving by it on our way to Pittsburgh. Yeah. I saw the rock. Uh, what was the billboard? I'm not going to remember it now. Something Mm-mm. about rock. I don't know. <laughs> the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yep. That's, that's all I know. That's it. <laughs> uh, so we'll have to yell about some away games next week. I'm sure I will find something to scream about. Oh, I know There you are Blackhawks games in the meantime, and <laughs> God help me, this team drives me nuts. <laughs> So, until next Monday, or probably Tuesday when you're listening to this, we will catch you next time. Thank you for listening to another screamy version of From Center Ice, the podcast. You never know what you're gonna get.